Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin and I'm back from PAX East and I'm continuing my uh, release of videos that I did while I was there. This is a big video game exposition that takes place in Boston every year. It's great for us in the Northeast to get some uh, love from the video game industry and this is a great show to get some of that. Uh, now what I did when I was out there was of course look for all my hardware and technology stuff that I usually cover on the channel. I don't do a lot of video game coverage though unless there's a game that I'm really excited about. Uh, so I'll leave the, the coverage of the games to other channels. I'm sure many of you are already watching those channels because they will do a much better job of uh, covering all the latest and greatest than I will. But uh, what I wanted to do is find out some of the things that are impacting developers in the industry and how uh, the rise of the internet and all these new platforms like Steam and GOG are making it easier for small development houses and in some cases individual developers to reach huge audiences and actually be competitive against the big Goliaths in the industry. So what we're going to have over the next three videos are three different interviews with different developers who are doing different things in the gaming industry. So the first one you're going to hear from uh, is Steven Alexander from Infamous Games, and he is uh, basically recreating the point and click genre. We're gonna hear some really interesting perspectives here uh, over the next three videos. I hope you'll enjoy them. Uh, do watch them all, because it's kind of interesting just to hear how everybody comes at uh, these problems of developing games and finding an audience. So without further ado, here is Steven Alexander. Well, this is Steven Alexander, and he is the proprietor of Infamous Games, and uh, they are bringing back a game genre that uh, I really loved as a kid, as did Steven. Tell me about what you guys do. Uh, we make uh, classic uh, point-and-click adventures, you know, in the vein of uh, Sierra and LucasArts, the games that we grew up playing. And what's funny about this is that back in the day when we were children, um, we're, we're both probably pushing about 40, give or take. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, this was the AAA game title. Oh. Every, everybody made it. Yeah, these were, these, these were the games. You used to wait to go down to Babbage's and go buy these games at full price, you know. Now it's it, they've they've gone away from, from the major commercial makers, but now we're seeing a comeback here, and you're making new games in this genre, right? Yeah, there's lots of uh, smaller independent developers that are making games in this genre. You know, we're just one of them. There's uh, Wajidai Games by uh, Dave Gilbert, which publishes a lot of great games, and uh, some of the, some of the greats are coming back and uh, publishing new adventure games. Uh, Space Venture from the two guys from Andromeda who did the Space Quest series comes to mind, Thimbleweed Park by Ron Gilbert. So we're just lucky to be part of it, and we're glad that people still like these games and want to play them. And so tell me about some of the challenges, because you're, you're coming to this pretty much fresh, because you and I were both children playing these games when we were kids. So, so how hard was it to find an audience for this? What did you have to do to get uh, your games out there in front of people? It was, uh, you know, it was a long journey. We actually started out doing uh, free remakes of games that we liked. We remade King's Quest III in 2006, and then 2011 we remade Space Quest II, and those were available for free from our previous group called Infamous Adventures. And at that point we had a lot of fans and we were like, well, we have some uh, original ideas, let's make some of our own games. So that's where we are now. And, and the rest is kind of history. Absolutely. What are some of the challenges? Because it's it's a lot. I, you know, it's not easy to make a game, but it's easy to make a game, uh, and everybody can get their games out there in the market. How do you market yourself as an independent game maker? Well, that's the, that's the tough part. You know, marketing this. It's a very niche product, so you, you have to try to find the people who like these games. It goes. It involves a lot of finding forums and those small, out of the way places on the net. But there's people out there. You just have to find them. You know, it's um, you know, it's not like with other other genres where you can also have a lot of fans just come to you. But uh, people are very excited though when they find us. I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten from people that are like, "Oh, you you reminded me of my childhood. This is great. I'm so glad people are making new games like this." So we're very fortunate. A lot of guerrilla marketing to kind of get it. Very much so. You know, a lot of social media. We have a, we have a good presence on Twitter and uh, on Facebook. But we also uh, visit lots of forums, and we have uh, lots of friends that way. A lot of word of mouth. Tell me about your latest games that you're developing now. Well, the latest games that we're working on is an anthology series called The Order of the Thorn. It takes place in a fantasy world with magic and might and everything. The interesting thing about this uh, series is an anthology is there's four different chapters to it, as we call it, but each game has a different protagonist. And they all come and converge to tell one story about this mythical land called Uir and uh, everything that happens in it. We released the first part of that game, The King's Challenge, in January. So it's a multi-episodic kind of thing? We're working on the second part right now, which is called Fortress of Fire. 
And is this available on all platforms, or what's available on? It's, uh, it's available on all platforms. Uh, you can get it uh, at Steam and GOG, etc., uh, any place like that. How hard is it to break into some of those, those, those websites like Steam and GOG? Because they don't take everybody, right? They do have some editorial control over what they accept. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I spent a lot of years making inroads with people, and uh, you know, uh, we're very lucky. Uh, people liked what we did with our remakes, and uh, I gained a lot of friends in the industry that way. And uh, you know, you'd be surprised at what being nice will get you. Uh, be polite, you know, and, and be polite, be persistent, and don't give up. And that's part of it, right? Is this is to keep trying and keep working at it? Oh yeah, you don't give up. You know, that's the problem. There's a lot of people out there that want to make adventure games, but when they hit that hump during development, they give up. Where we've succeeded is because we've persevered. We've, we've pushed through that. And that's what you have to do. You have to push through, you have to persevere. Tell me a little bit about some of these people that you that we, you and I both kind of idolized as kids who were making these games. Uh, as we mentioned, that, that, that genre from a commercial AAA standpoint has kind of withered away a little bit. Now these, these rock star point and click game uh, developers are coming back independently and you have now more experience in the industry than they do. So tell me a little bit about what you've been interacting with some of these other, other folks. You know, I found that most of uh, the heroes that we've had from the adventure game community are very down to earth people, very smart and, and very fun. We've had some good interactions with them over the years. Uh, Scott Murphy, uh, co-designer of Space Quest, he was a real mentor to us in, in the early days. Uh, when we funded our first game on Kickstarter in 2012, we all had a, we had a live Skype chat with him and he just gave us so much advice and he was so encouraging. He said, it's just really nice to see a bunch of good guys like you going out there and making these games like I did. So, I mean, we're very fortunate. In many ways, it's kind of the, it, it, the old is new again because this is how many game developers got started, not by being in some big company, but they were developing something. They used to sell discs in little, little plastic bags. Ziploc bags, yeah. You know, I mean, we're the, we're the handmade, homemade approach. I mean, these games are made how Roberta Williams basically made her games. I sat around planning it around my kitchen table and, uh, but now the kitchen table has expanded because my partners are from all around the world and we use Skype you know, to communicate. So I'm sitting at my kitchen table in New York talking with my partner in Australia, planning the game, you know, and, and other people that I work with are from like Great Britain and South Africa and uh, in, in Australia. It's just amazing. So the overhead's a lot lower now than it would, would be for the, even the Ken Williamses of the world back in the day. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, we, since we mostly work remotely from the office, you know, we do most of the work at home. So, you know, I mean, it's, uh, we're lucky that the tools that are available to game makers today are affordable, and uh, you can make you can make games that would have cost millions 20 years ago for a for a fraction of the budget on your kitchen table, no less. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's awesome. So it's really great to see see that you're really succeeding here and having fun doing it, which is really awesome. Are you seeing a lot of younger people now getting into this genre who never experienced it before? Yeah, you know, and I, they really like it. Kids, you know, that have discovered this, they find something a little different, maybe a little more cerebral. You know, there's lots, it's puzzle oriented. And uh, you, there's also uh, a lot of them uh, appreciate the retro kind of graphics that we have. We, you know, use traditional low res graphics on some of our games. And uh, as a style, there's people out there that really like this. They're like, oh wow, this is really cool. And you know, uh, back when you had the limitations on what kind of graphics you could make, you had to get creative on how you represented, you know, things on screen. So that's a challenge too with our artists. And I really enjoy that. Excellent. Well, Stephen, thank you very much. This is really fun to talk and just uh, see that this genre is finally coming back because there's been no loss of demand, I think, from us aging gamers. But you know, you, uh, We have the best fans, really. We get emails from all over the world. People just love our games, and I love making them for them. I love working with the people that I do, and we're just very fortunate that people still want to play these games. Hopefully you'll keep making them, and thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.